Hello and welcome back to Pride of Anglia, where against my, the board and the media's expectations, we have taken our newly promoted Northampton Town side to a League One promotion challenge. I mean, I say that, we are literally only eight games in, but it's going quite well. Everything can and likely will go very wrong very quickly. I mean, just look at some of the teams we've got coming up. I hope you like football matches because there's a lot to get through today. Our manager of the month record in this save so far isn't particularly extensive and it's another second place again here. First game today is Portsmouth, occasional alternate save on the channel, but this Pompey find themselves mid-table and we make a cracking start as Jordan Maguire Drew really should have gone to spec savers and that was it. Our gift to Chaplin, the difference and only highlight. What was I saying about things going wrong? Safe to say Garner and Maguire Drew aren't the same vintage as last season. Ah well, no time to commiserate as we have the Bournemouth under 23s in the Papa John's Trophy and the rotated front three creates a selection dilemma as they are excellent. And Jolly starts things off before a classy brace from Morris seals a 3-0 win This sends us top of the group. I then complete my Continental Pro coaching course, I like to assume there was some kind of ceremony and certificate involved and it is just in time to face Bristol Rovers where a win could see us go second. And the big news is that Garner and Maguire Drew are dropped dropped and Njoli certainly takes his chance. He sends it forward as expertly for Wilson to fire home a powerful strike before winning and converting a penalty. Leonard then puts in a legitimate masterclass to keep his sheet clean as we run out 2-0 winners. We stay third but we're well in the mix. Luton then sack their manager. We did, of course, reject the chance to manage them to take the Northampton job in the first place. They're currently in the championship relegation zone, but hardly cut off. This is obviously the issue we have now. Go for a job like this, or stay and wait in the hope that we can get the Norwich job. Honestly, as much as we have no money, I'd rather stick here for now, I think. Anyway, we have Accrington Stanley, and offside goal? Check. Woodwork? Check. Lose 1-0? check. Ugh, at least it wasn't a 94th minute equaliser or something. But don't worry folks because there literally was one in the next game against Swindon. Why am I not applying for the Luton job again? We also lose Declan John for five weeks. And just to compound everything, the takeover finally happens as Ryan Collins seizes control and he's pleased to inform me that he has no plans to provide the club with any investment. I mean, I wasn't expecting millions, but something would have been nice. He offers me a new deal too. You know what, Ryan? It's still a no. We end the month with a local derby against Cambridge, and literally nothing happens until they bang in a free kick. But we don't give up, and in the dying seconds, Morris heads in an equaliser to at least end the month on a positive note, and end it in the playoffs. And there is literally no let up as we immediately have to face top of the league and absolute main local rivals Peterborough United. And how do you even describe this one? We are largely awful and the first half is entirely Peterborough. Leonard makes a good save but can't keep them out forever as Tedic scores. But in the second half, as awful as our ratings are, we grab an equaliser through Wilson, who really has gone up a gear this season. We look on for an undeserved point, but Posh's pressure tells again and Tadic restores their lead. But then in the final seconds, again we get drama as we win a penalty which Garner converts to get us that undeserved point back. You really can't begrudge it, but boy, that was lucky. Four games without a win though, so it would be nice to get one over Rotherham. And we do, but my god, we got over a four for XG and it was somehow only one. 1-0 and it was never comfortable at all but still a win is a win. Luton ends up hiring Nigel Pearson without even so much as a phone call in our direction. Will I regret not going for it? It would have denied us our 100th game as Northampton manager if we had got it and that is against our old rival Southend in the FA Cup first round and that is a 1-0 win. Aaron's with the only goal, which is nice, but the Papa John's trophy is far more winnable. We're in a strong position and a good result over Newport will seal our progression to the knockouts. And it's a wonderful performance. Wilson's cross is powered home by Garner before Njoli doubles the lead. Garner gets his second from the spot and while they pull a goal back, it's a consolation alone as Feeney makes it 4-1. We win the group and receive Shrewsbury in the next round. Thanks to international postponements, we have two games in hand on a few sides above us as we face Wickham and two late corner goals help ensure a 3-0 win before we get a frustrating 2-2 draw with Burton, a definite missed opportunity. The new chairman then offers me a new deal, again, 
getting a bit annoying now. I'll sign one at the end of the season if there's nowhere better to go. Don't tell him that though. The month ends at home to bottom of the league Lincoln and we leave it late but a penalty from Ghana gives us the lead before a fine strike from Wilson seals another win. We are well in contention for at least a playoff spot. Despite getting two draws in five games, we win November's Manager of the Month. I don't really understand how this is calculated, but okay, sure, I'm not complaining. Francis Wilson is also awarded both Player of the Month and Young Player of the Month. I nearly didn't renew his loan in the summer, so I'm glad I did. Our Papa John's game against Shrewsbury has come along very quickly. It's another game in which we dominate, but again, we are frustrated. And Jolly's effort are best of the first half and somehow not going in. In the second half, we find a breakthrough though with Ghana netting a rebound and that's enough to see us through to round three where we will face the Watford under 23s. I fully rotate for our FA Cup second round game against Barnsley and the second string do a great job especially Will Mannion who tips away an onslaught of late chances before Harriet and Morris wheel away to seal a 3-1 win. Despite their rest though the first 11 cannot find a way through against Crew as we receive yet more dropped points. A tough test against Sheffield Wednesday follows, except it's not much of a tough test at all. Wilson sweeping ball finds in Jolly to give us an early lead before Garner grabs a second and an own goal surely seals it in the first half. And indeed, aside from an injury time consolation, it's another excellent win. In order to avoid last year's Badger situation, we agree to sign Scott McKellar permanently on a free now with his Dundee contract expiring. Sensible transfer, whatever happens, I think. Former League 2 rivals Mansfield are next and we leave it very, very late, but a header from Dizel gives us the win before we look to continue our good form against Lincoln. We could conceivably go top with a win even, but we don't because we obviously lose. An absolute disgrace from Leonard and John as we take the lead but bin it off within minutes. We equalise and then throw that away again too. A last second equaliser is ruled out for offside, incorrectly in my view, but there we are. Oh well, no let up at all as we have Sunderland next at the start of a busy Christmas week. We take an early lead here too as a fast move comes to Injoli to beautifully chip the keeper. He comes close to doubling it before another strong move sees Aarons end up slotting home. Garner then ends up sealing it with a penalty and although we still can't keep a clean sheet we get back to winning ways. Sunderland by the way are awful and heading for League 2. Also awful is Kieran Freeman getting injured for three months. He's 33 and declining so that might be that. Also DJ can Captain Sturridge goes on loan to Chester for the rest of the season after never really getting a look in. Our Boxing Day battle is against Portsmouth who, like Sunderland, are seemingly doomed to stay in this division forever. Nothing much really happens until Lewis Baker smashes home a free kick. We do battle back and Garner heads in an equaliser though. 1-1, not bad. We're still hovering just below the automatic spots in fourth and still have massively surpassed my expectations of how this season would go. And, oh look, who's here with another contract offer? I suppose we could sign it, and it's not exactly like any of the championship sides couldn't afford our buyout, but equally, we'll never not be able to sign one as long as we stay up. 2025 ends with us having to face Sunderland for the second time in a week, and they are still just as rubbish as last time, as a Ghana hat-trick sees them off. Although we do lose Aaron's for six weeks, which is an issue as Vernon has been appalling recently and it's not helped as Callum Harriet gets injured as well, so another winger might be on the cards. 2026 begins with Jed Garner winning December's Player of the Month with an excellent 7-in-7. Seven seven. Very impressive after a slow start to life at this level. I then have the realisation that both Scottish loans, helpfully, were only for six months. Luckily, as we've already got McKellar permanently in the summer anyway, Dundee agreed to an instant sale for £3,000 to prevent any issues. Denham, however, rejects an extension, so we'll need to be replaced. We grab Harry Ranson on loan from Cheltenham to handle the job. We come from behind to beat Accrington Stanley in the first game of the new year, a great comeback performance. But then it's time for our third round Papa John's Trophy match against the Watford under 23s. No Feeney as he's suspended. 16 minutes in, Garner receives the ball in space, turns and then just absolutely thumps it into the top corner. One of the goals of the save, incredible. The entire front three ends up scoring as well as Jolly floats in first before Vernon does likewise in the second having assisted the first two goals. What a performance, what a win, what an inevitability we get Chelsea under 23s in the next round. Given the sheer amount of and importance of our upcoming games, 
I have no option but to fully rotate for our FA Cup third round game against Stoke, and we obviously get trashed. That proves to be the last outing for Dale Gorman, who decides to join Crusaders on a free in the summer, and because I could really use the wage budget, I sell him now for a measly £1,000. That creates space to re-sign the one and only Josh Hines, who didn't exactly excel for us last year, and indeed has been without a club since being released by Hull, but our wide options are fleeting, so needs must. We have a huge game against Oxford United next, who are just two points above us, and it's great to see the rest worked wonders as we literally go behind from kickoff and then they double it not long after. We aren't playing badly, but we aren't playing well. And while Westbrook does grab a goal back, it's too little, too late. We stay fourth, now five off top. Oh, and Declan John gets injured again. We can only manage a draw at home to Swindon, having to come from behind again. Would have been nice to win as we then have Bristol Rovers, the new team just two points ahead of us. And we actually managed to grab a win, 1-0 thanks to a scruffy Westbrook effort which certainly keeps things interesting at the top. This season really feels like a slog, but that's the nature of 46 games past cups, I suppose. The fact that we're in the automatic conversation at all is pretty remarkable, all things considered. We can solidify our position in the local derby against Cambridge, who are also doing well. Garner gives us a lead in typical style, but in the second half, Titov scores a stupid own goal. Hines swiftly wins and then scores a penalty, but we immediately bin this lead off once again, with May unchecked at a free kick. 2-2, more waste. Our Papa John's Trophy quarterfinal against Chelsea under 23s means there's light at the end of the tunnel as far as the episode is concerned. Will our trophy search continue? McKellar makes a crucial early block in an even first half, and just before the break, Wilson flicks it over to Njoli to nod us in front. In the second half, Chelsea come forward and Leonard decides to actually make some saves for once, but then they get a prime free kick which Daniel Torres dispatches. But with not long left, Andre Dizel comes off the bench, runs down the left, and crosses perfectly for that man Garner to put a first time finish into the net. 2-1, Chelsea have no time to respond and we're into the semi-final. Unfortunately, we'll have to face Oxford again there though. We end the episode with yet more waste as we can only draw 0-0 with Frank Lampard's Barnsley. But hey, we're still fourth and still seven points inside the playoffs, so that certainly seems a possibility. And considering everyone expected us to be relegated, I can hardly complain. As well as this season is going, I definitely want a new challenge soon though, but that's of course dependent on what other people do. Hopefully there'll be some movement at the end of the season, unless we end up promoting ourselves of course. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.